Hi, so I'm going to be talking about the protection motivation theory. So what is the protect- protection motivation theory? It's basically making a cognitive assessment whether there is a threat to your health or not. So um, these can include verbal persuasions, um, observational training, I mean learning, and also personal experience, which is an intrapersonal source. Um, so diving a little bit deeper, we're going to talk about the two types of appraisals. So the first appraisal is um, the threat appraisal process, and this one ne- needs to be addressed first before anything else comes into play. Um, so it assesses the maladaptive behaviors. Um, this can include physical inactivity, binge drinking, um, excessive eating, etc., Um, It includes intrinsic pleasure, so whether or not it feels good, and um, extrinsic rewards, so this can be um, someone's approval that's needed or also just the need of receiving attention. Um, And then lastly, it's the severity of the threat, so whether or not the threat has more consequences or not. Um, So next we'll be talking about the coping appraisal, which is the second appraisal. Um, This assesses adaptive behaviors, which adaptive behaviors is also um, health enhancement behaviors. Um, This includes response, efficacy, believing, coping will ward off the threat, so basically make the threat go away. And then it also includes self-efficacy, the capability of completing the coping. And then the lastly is the response cost. So this can be side effects, complex, complexity, um, etc. So how is this used in the behavioral intervention? So um, I see a lot of programs, health programs do this, which is switching out the negative coping mechanisms um, and switching it to exercising, which exercising would um, boost a person's mood. Um, And it's also a great source of a coping mechanism for an individual. So, for example, let's say a negative coping mechanism is um, binge drinking or excessive eating. So instead of doing those after a threat has been revealed, then you would um, push the individual to switch to exercise instead. Um, so my opinion on this is that I feel like there should be a lot more, um, programs encouraging this. I feel like, especially through social media, there isn't really that much, um, persuasion going on in the social media community to, uh, make people or to push people to exercise instead, Um, Because exercise is a great source to also feel good, not only look good. And I feel like there's um, a a misconception that exercise is only for physical benefits rather than mental. And I feel like if more people know about that, then they will um, get more interacted with um, health programs and etc. Thank you for listening to my little webinar. (laughs)